Yeah, y'all got this movie called City Hunter. It was also certified for gangster shit. So it starts off with this chick. He's asking this dude Rio for help or whatever like that. By mine is she's trying to get her sister back. Her sister by the name of Karumi. We find out Rio is the city hunter. And he works with this dude by the name of Maki, who's a retired cop. So as he's scoping through the city, he ends up finding this chick Karumi being surrounded by some goons. He goes in there, whips all that candy ass. But she was so shook at the sight of the beatdown, she ended up starting running herself. Now they're chasing her around. Then they end up chasing her in this building. More goons come out of nowhere, and they got to handle them niggas. Then all of a sudden, she jumps from one window to the other. We're like, what the heck? The chase is on. They get her down to the ground. They finally corner her, and then all of a sudden, she got this crazy blue vein that's like popping out the middle of her face. And all of a sudden, she just jumps off something sporadically and just lands on a fucking truck. I'm like, what the heck? Maki realizes that she dropped two of these like blue vows. He picks them up and puts them in his pocket. What exactly is this blue stuff? I'll tell you in a minute. So after Karumi ended up escaping, um, Maki tells Rio that he's got to meet his sister, Corey at this restaurant. This is after they escaped the police detective, Sasami. She made sure they got out of there before Detective Ito, Ito came in. Ito is this old chief that runs the police force. Sasami is like one of the only people that can really put Rio in check. <laughs> so anyway, Maki meets up with his sister, Corey, and he got something to tell her. But before he can tell her, this big ass truck comes out of nowhere and crashes into the restaurant. And the guy that gets out of the truck goes straight for Maki. Turns out we see a blue vein pop out of his head. This guy is on that stuff too. He ends up killing Maki. Done deal dead as shit. Corey's traumatized. Rio comes back, but before Maki dies, he ends up giving her the two blue uh, vials or whatever. So the thing is, Rio is still trying to find Karimi because obviously revenge for Maki and on top of that, he's supposed to be finding her for the sister. Corey runs revenge, obviously, so she's going around digging, trying to find all this information. But obviously, she has never done police work. She never knew anything about Maki's job. She goes around asking anybody random ass questions, about to get herself fucked up. Now, Rio doesn't want to get involved for two reasons. One, Maki told her to protect her at all times. That was the last thing he said before she before he died. And two, he feels like she'll pretty much slow him down. Corey keeps following Rio everywhere he goes until finally he's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to decide to help her. So he goes to the stripper spot where he's doing all these dances and shit. All the girls love him. They want to be with him and all that other stuff, right? But then he takes her somewhere else and now it gets serious. He ends up going to this one spot with his old man. We just go call him Gramps, right? Remember the delinquents that was chasing at the Karumi and all that got them candy asses whipped? Well, they all work for Gramps. Now, for a second, we think Gramps has something to do with it, but he says, nah, that's not my department. But he gives us some information based on the blue stuff. Apparently, it's some type of drug. Now, apparently, this drug could give people hyperactive senses and give them superpowers or super heightened abilities. Basically, an aggressive form of angel dust. Now, in the news, they talked about somebody throwing a vending machine at somebody, somebody jumping on a building, and then the car that ran into the daggone restaurant. We found out these are all random people that took the drug. The thing about it is when the drug wears off, these niggas die. And the police found the body of the guy that killed Maki. So Gramps knows somebody's making this drug, but he doesn't know who's manufacturing it. So now Corey's trying to find everybody all over the place to try to find uh, Karumi or whatever like that. And he's just, she's just asking random questions. And he's just like, seriously, you're not going to get anywhere with this. Then all of a sudden, out of the crowd, Karumi pops up out of nowhere. We're like, what the fuck? They end up chasing her down. She ends up collapsing off of exhaustion. They get her back to the house and Corey tries to calm her down. But Karumi wakes up. They're basically taking care of her and whatnot until she gets her strength up. So while Corey's calming Karumi down, Rio ends up meeting up with Sasami. And she basically explains to him what the drug is and all that, which I basically just told you already. But we also found out about the secret that Maki was keeping from Corey. So at the beginning, when Maki and Rio was talking, we have found out that Corey was actually adopted. But that's not really the case. What is the case when you're going to figure out why she's adopted? The thing is, Maki's father was actually a police officer who ended up killing Tori's real father because he was pursuing this same drug. And Maki's father ended up adopting Corey. So I guess she was pretty young at the time, so he didn't even, she didn't even remember her real father. But yeah, all this time, she never knew that. Now, why does Sasami decide to give Rio this information now? Maybe because Maki died. I don't know. Then all of a sudden, we see these people all gathered in black. It's this group called The Union. Then they end up making an example out of this one dude and blowing his fucking brains out the back of his head. Now, how the fuck did that happen? Oh, apparently, all these people had these chips in the back of their necks that light up green. So when it starts lighting up red, you know you're pretty much fucked. Now, their goal is to kidnap Karumi. Now, why is this? Now, you're thinking to yourselves, as we said earlier, she took the drug too, right? Well, here's the thing. She's been the only one to survive the effects after using the drug. So basically, the union needs Karumi to, you know, take her blood, manufacture, do all that stuff so they can have the proper doses to make this drug official and probably sell it all over the country or whatever like that. So Rio comes back home. Corey's been getting along with Karumi, and it turns out she was always involved in this cosplay back in the day. They used to call her Milk. Turns out they're actually having a cosplay event and she wants to actually be there at the event, but this is the reason why. 
she wants to go there and Corey has this plan that if she goes out in the open, it'll lure out the captors and be able to get to him. Rio did not want to go along with this plan because he's trying to protect them, but his love of cosplay and lollycons and girls and all that, you know, affects his decision. I think this uh, Rio loves to be goofy, but trust me, that nigga is on point when it comes to the jobs. He's serious business. So they go to the cosplay thing. He pretends to be like the manager of Karumi or whatnot while this lady is talking to her. She's supposed to be sponsoring an event and whatnot. So Milk gets on stage, does her thing, starts dancing around or whatever like that. And you got people in the front trying to take pictures. And it's so funny, Rio ends up like blocking them with the pictures or whatever like that. But he's got this like horse head that's on his dick or whatever like that. And this horse head is supposed to represent him being like the horse manager to the... It's weird. It's funny. But there's a reason I'm explaining this horse head. So while he's blocking these random dudes or taking pictures of the panties, he's doing this on purpose because all the way up in the sky, he can see some snipers. There's one sniper that's trying to get at Karumi, right? He's doing these flips and he's blocking all the tranquilizer darts that are being aimed at Karumi. But the thing is, he's using the horse head to block the tranquilizer darts. I'm like, the fuck? Then this one chick gets up out of nowhere and tries to fight Rio. Now this one chick is actually part of the union. Well, it turns out when Karumi was talking back at the house or whatever like that, she explained that she didn't even have a sister. So we was like, what? Turns out this chick was the one that taught the Rio to pretend to have a sister to look for Karumi. I'm like, wow. Her whole purpose in going to Rio was to lure Karumi out because they couldn't find her. I'm like, that's crazy. They got the beefing on stage. And let me tell you, the fight choreography in this movie is simply ridiculous. I haven't even gotten to the other scene yet, but I'll explain that in a minute. It was so crazy in between the fight how he won because she didn't even realize that he actually took one of the tranquilizer darts off the horse and stabbed her in the fucking leg with it. I'm like, what? Basically put her to sleep. Cops came, picked her up. The sniper dude got away. Corey ends up seeing the cop and giving Karumi over to the cop, but it turns out the cop was actually Chief Ito. Now you're thinking to yourself, why was he the only one there first? Where were the other cops? Well... Let's get to Sasami taking out the girl and getting them in the car ride or whatever like that. Now, they're trying to get some information. All of a sudden, she just goes, for the union. And then the girl's bomb activates in her neck and she's done deal dead as shit. But the bomb doesn't hurt anybody else around them. It just blows them up from the neck inside out. That's why everybody else was okay. But the girl was done deal dead as shit. So now everybody meets up. But the thing is, we think to ourselves, where the fuck is Karumi at? Then we find out Chief Ito has got Karumi in this like little warehouse or whatever like that. We're like, oh, this motherfucker ain't shit. He turns her over to these random two dudes and gets money out of them. I'm like, oh, he bribed niggas. The crazy thing is after they get the girl to dip off because now she belongs to the union, the suitcase was wired with a bum and it blows Chief Ito the fuck up. That's what you get for being a Rudy Poo candy ass. So now we got the sad moment where Corey's feeling sad about her brother. And Rio obviously has been trying to keep her out of the way because he's been trying to protect her. But she always talk about that's bullshit. Maki was the one that needed protected. And it gets to the point he's going to let her go with her so we can finish all this shit off. Then we see Karumi in this building all tied up to this chair, right? And the lady that she was talking to earlier that's supposed to be running the event, turns out she actually works for the union as well. Because she's supposed to be working with a bunch of other scientists to extract her blood or whatever like that so they can mix it around with the blue stuff and then, you know what I'm saying, get that shit going. Then this guy Tatsu comes out of nowhere and slices her quick with the, ne- the quickness, neck like, Shoo! I'm like, what the fuck? Then he brings in two soldiers. They light up the whole the fucking doctors in there. Then they got all these little test subjects in cages, and then the soldiers go in there and light all these niggas up. I'm like, what the fuck? So the thing is, Tatsu says he ain't got no more use for her no more. And then I'm like, wait a minute. If she's one of the main doctors that's supposed to help re-extract the blood out of Karumi's DNA, but hasn't had a chance to do it yet, why the fuck would you not need her? So Sasami told Rio before the girl died that she said something about for the union. So Rio doesn't know who the union is, so he talks to Gramps, and then Gramps get the information for him. Gramps says, yeah, they're some type of radical group that was trying to get this drug and shit popping. Gramps ends up finding out their base of operations. This is this company called Lore. Turns out it's this big-ass office building, and that's exactly where Karumi was at when she was laying on the table. And now Rio and Corey make it there, and now it's time for the epic beef. They get there and see dead bodies all over the place. Then they get to this another room where it's like the whole organization of operations and whatnot. They get there, but as soon as they turn around, it's like 30 or 40 different damn soldiers ready to gun them niggas down. And then you have one of the most epic fight scenes I've probably ever seen in my entire life. I'm telling you, this movie alone probably took six months just to record the fights. The craziest part was when you're getting chased by like 10 soldiers and he lifted up the guardrail and had it spinning around. So he was shooting through the guardrail, making sure the bullets were still hitting it on the other side. It was fucking ridiculous. So after they cleared all them niggas out, all of a sudden you see Tatsu 
with Karumi as a hostage, and they're going to go up the elevator. So Corey's trying to chase, chase at the Tatsu. Meanwhile, Rio's got to fight this big motherfucker, the same dude that was a sniper. Well, t- guess what? He took the drug, too. Now he's hyped up off juice. It takes him a while, but Rio finally whips his candy ass. Tatsu ends up getting to the top of the tile with Karumi, but he ends up going outside the window on this like little platform and whatnot. And I'm like, is he going to kill her? Like, what the fuck is he going to do? But apparently this helicopter is supposed to come to pick him up so he can make his getaway and whatnot. Corey isn't running into a glass, and then it's like he starts telling his backstory. He knows exactly who she is. He's like, oh, you lost your father and your brother. He was like, oh, you still don't know. So he tells her when Maki's father gunned down her real father, her real father was actually part of the union. But the thing is, Maki didn't actually, Maki's father actually really didn't kill him. He failed in one of his missions and the union ended up blowing him the fuck up. So while she's pissed off she can't get through the glass, all of a sudden Rio shows up. He starts shooting at each point in the glass, whatever like that, just so he can run through and break that shit down. Tatsu gets his ass whipped. He's about to get done deal. And all of a sudden, Corey pulls out the gun and we're like, oh shit, she gonna shoot him? And all of us was watching, like, please shoot this motherfucker. But we know she didn't have the heart to do it. Rio takes the gun and just hugs her. The crazy thing is the helicopter probably seen the situation and never stopped to give Tatsu the ladder. Then all of a sudden, Tatsu's trigger thing, he hears that shit starting to go off. He's like, oh, fuck no. Tatsu pulls his gun out of nowhere about to shoot, but Rio ends up shooting him, not even looking at his ass. He just flips the gun backwards like, bam, you're done deal dead as shit. Sasami and the police get there in time. Or it's on time they can be when all the mayhem happens. We know how this goes. Police come late after everything happens. Corey and Karumi come down the steps and we're like, where the fuck is Rio at? They ain't find him near the carnage. And we're like, how the hell do you get away in that big ass building off the top? Did he hits a ride of the helicopter somehow? How do you get away? Anyway, next thing we see is him back at the house sleeping and shit. Corey ends up going to the grave of her loved ones and then she gets a text from Karumi. She's been doing better and she's been doing more cosplay and shit. Rio finally wakes up and hears vacuuming. And all of a sudden, we see Corey in there cleaning up the house. They run around chasing each other in the house, and that's the end of the movie. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to put it to y'all like this. For a movie that should have been relatively serious, and it was, Ryo turns his acting into comedy gold. <laughs> from him to go from dry humor to outlandish is freaking comedically hilarious. But the majority of the movie is really serious in tone, considering what the plot was based on. I say, if you get time to check it out, check that shit out for real, yo. City Hunter on Netflix, check it out.